Hey, math models. What an insane time this has been. To my virtual learners out there, I'm virtual too. I've been put on quarantine because of close contact with somebody that the school worried about. So I've been out of school this week, if you haven't picked that up. Uh, the subject in school has been financial topics since the beginning of the semester. Okay, we're going to get deeper into pay and compensation and taxes and investments and all this. But we're going to pause. And at the end of this week, we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to refresh our math on decimals and fractions and percentages. Decimals, fractions, and percentages. Okay. So I have to think about this. If there's any topic that the American public, adults included, might benefit from reviewing in math once a year, it's this one. I just reviewed for today, getting ready to make this video. Decimals, fractions, and percentages confuse a lot of people but in the financial world you will hear people switch back and forth between one and the other real fast okay in your google classroom you have a document okay i'm gonna take my picture away your classroom will look something like this tomorrow or today this is the Mitchell test classroom, all right? So I'm gonna click on this one that says decimals, fractions, and percents, all right? It's a PDF document, but I wanna show you something. We're gonna do notes. You in the class, if you have a paper copy, you will be using your paper copy to do this. When you click on a PDF attachment, it comes up like this. I'm sure you've done it this year. It comes up where there's you know, just a PDF, it's a couple pages long, three pages, and you can't change it, can't do anything to it. Some teachers have said, print this out, take pictures, send it back. I've never liked that option, even though I've asked for it. I'm going to try something new today. I downloaded a Chrome extension called Cami. It is cleared by ACISD to use. You people at home or in the classroom, if you want to take notes digitally, I'm going to model how to use it. And I recommend you try it, especially if you have teachers that are sending lots of PDFs. So again, I'm in a classroom. Somebody sent me a PDF. I click on it. It gets this black background. And now I'm going to open with Cami. It's going to take me into a new um, tab in my web browser. And this is what Cami looks like when you open it up. It's the same PDF, but now I have a lot of options on what to do with it. I also have options on wh like where it came from. This is the original here. And I can either print it or I can save it to a specific part of my Google Drive. This opens up into your Google Drive. When you hit that click, click save, it is saved in your Google Classroom, and you can turn it back in as an assignment, completed as a PDF without ever having printing anything. Okay. Well, I'm not sure how to get my picture back. So just listen to my words for a second. I want to tell you about decimals and fractions and percentages. And what I'm going to tell you here, I've tried to boil it down as tightly as I could. Maybe I'll try it with a text box. Okay, I'm going to put these across the top where your name would go. I'm going to add a text box. Okay, so I click over here on the T and I choose, you can font and color a text and whatever. But other than that, all you do is click on the T and then wherever you want to write in the document, top left corner, go. Here we go. 
let's see, you probably need a little bit more zoom too. So I'm going to do that. Okay. Fraction. An unfinished division problem. That's what it is. Fraction is an unfinished division problem. Uh, let's see. It looks like I can make this kind of pop with a little bit of yellow so I can see it almost like a sticky note. Okay. So a fraction is an unfinished division problem. Think of it that way. One divided by two or one over two or one half. Those are all descriptions of a fraction. It's an unfinished division problem. It's one number divided by the other. Here we go. Decimal. A fraction into a calculator. All right. Let's change that to a color. Oh, yeah. Now I've got two. It's sitting at the top. That's pretty cool. So that I can just add notes on here if I want to keep this for later. A decimal is a fraction. Put it into a calculator. It gives me a numeric answer for a fraction. Okay. Now I'm going to have to organize myself here. Maybe I want to move this all the way up here. And I'm going to move this one down here. That's what I'll do. Cover up a little bit at the top. And now I'm going to make another one. A percentage. A fraction with a number over 100. I have tried to take things they taught you forever for weeks and weeks in previous years and boil them down into very short statements. Oh, organize it how you want if you're going to use Kami. Maybe you want to like cascade them down like that. Maybe like that. Oh, man. And if I want to add my name, I can just put it somewhere up here in the corner. A fraction is an unfinished division problem. A decimal is a fraction put into a calculator. And a percentage, a fraction with a number over 100, where the 100 is the denominator. OK. Organize, move those as you need. I am going to go through this worksheet of math. It's been a while since we did this. And there are 34 problems, but I'm going to try to do about half with you. This, this video may go on in length, but here, here in a second, we're going to finish up the introductory part. Then I'm going to go to a specific, uh, specifically to each like four or six or eight problems that are one kind, and I'm going to do two of them. So you may skip around in the video if you know that you're okay, say, taking one half and writing it as a percent. Parts of this video will touch all of this document, so you may want to watch the whole thing and pick off two and then work on a couple. Or if you think you know more um, and you're at home, you can just kind of pick and choose in the video where you want some help, backwards and forwards. So here we go. Write each as a percent round to the nearest tenth of a percent. So I've got different things I can do in Cami here. Um, I can add more comments. I'm gonna, let me give it a little comment over here. So write each as a percent. Here's what I want to do for this. I want to move two decimal places to the right and I can kind of squash this up here and drag it over and we'll make that a color too. There, move two decimal places to the right. Okay, so 0 0.661, move two decimal places to the right. What happens is 
we are multiplying times 100. Two decimal places to the right, 66.1%. The decimal 0 0.661 is 66.1%. Let's try that down here. 0 0.005 times 100. Move two decimal places to the right, 0 0.5%. And he used a comma. It is supposed to be. OK, so one advantage with Cami is I can make all these changes and save them and then turn them back into Mr. Mitchell as my um, as my assignment. That's one advantage. Then the second would be I can save this and go back and study it. I can change it if I need it. I can write on it. I can Then I can use it as like informed notes, adding pieces of my information. Okay, so there's two from the beginning. Write each as a percent. All right. What do I really want to do for something like this? A note that would help me. Uh, put these into a calculator comma any calculator will work any calculator from your iPhone to uh, one of the school calculators they go in there's a little trick with the school calculator because you have to hit uh, a button to get the decimal that I can't remember right now because I'm home. It's one of the special buttons, top left. But I'm going to put one half into a calculator. So let's go ahead and bring one up. There we go. Okay, so one divided by two equals 0 0.5. Now, if you're good on that, go for it. One divided by two equals 0 0.5. Five. That's a decimal times 100 is 50%. I almost left it as a decimal. Write each as a percent. So fraction put into a calculator multiplied times 100. Let's see. Use repeating decimals when necessary. Let's see what that looks like. 1 over 3 equals, well, remind ourselves what 1 over 3 looks like. 1 divided by 3 is 0 0.3 repeating, they say. 0 0.333, I'm just going to put that for now, times 100 equals 33.3. .3. Use repeating decimals when necessary. Okay, I'll use a shape. I'm going to use this line right here to show that the 3 is repeating. That's the symbol for a repeating decimal. So I have changed these fractions into percentages, put them in a calculator, multiply times 100. Okay, add notes where you see any more information that you need. In class, I hope you can see well enough to write these in the blank spaces. Write each as a decimal. Okay, so from percentage to decimal, round to the thousandth place. Thousandth place. Okay. Write each as a decimal. I think what you want to do here Let's make it a note. Divide by 100. Or, anytime you multiply or divide something that looks like a percentage to start with, divide by 100, that's going to be divide the decimal version by 100. No. Start for the delay. Divide the number.
Or move the decimal two places to the left. So, 75%, 75% is equal to two decimal places to the left. Well, 0 0.75. I think that's it. Let's try it again. 37.5. 4% is equal to two decimal places to the left, 0 0.374 decimal. Hmm. Round to the thousandth place. I guess that would mean there would be a zero. This is the tenths, hundredths, thousandths. Okay. We're doing okay so far. Write each as a fraction. So I'm at the top of the next page, and it's number 13. Okay. And if I was going to pick a way to kind of summarize how to handle these, I would say divide by 100 and simplify. Make that into a little note, yellow out here to the side. Divide by 100 and simplify. Equals 75. Oh, I got a new idea. Let's try writing with the mouse. This makes me totally nervous, but I might have to do some math here, so I'm going to check it out. 75. Remember, as long as I can read it, you know, we'll be okay. Divided by 100, that's 75%. It is 75 over 100. Now, can I simplify it? Well, sure. I can divide each of these by a couple of numbers, right? 5 goes into 75, um, but I'm thinking bigger. 75 divided by 25 is 3. That's probably it. 25 is probably the biggest common denominator that goes into both of these. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, if I just drew it in kind of a, like, what's going to happen here, I'm going to divide each number by 25. There's my arrow. 75 divided by 25 is 3. So divide by 100 and simplify. The school calculators will do this. Let's see if I can draw that terrible picture again. Divided by 25. It's even better. I can still be proud of my work if it's ugly. And 100 divided by 25 is 4. So at least I know I can get a good square out of this. I can show my answer here. 75 as a fraction is 75 over 100, 3 divided by 4. Okay, we'll try that as a text box down here. Okay, so it's going to be 40 divided by 100. Okay, so what numbers break into that? Okay, that's going to be the same. 10 goes into both of those. Simplify. So 4 divided by 10, and that can be divided by 2. So it's steps in your head to simplify. Most calculators, I think, will simplify a fraction for you. There's calculators on the internet that will definitely do it. This one is equal to 2 over 5. So there's two methods. You could try this one, just writing in your answers with a mouse pen, or, you can, or a mouse pad, however you have it, or you could try typing it in. Okay. Oh man, these, as far as like financial stuff goes, these are some of my favorite because they're real world. Okay. I'm going to show you a couple. 
Mm. You see where it says discount? Find the selling price of each item. So this, you can do this in your head, real world. Original price of a wagon, $159.95. It's discounted 30%. So when you get up there and ring it in at the register plus tax, where, where are you going to be? Where about going to be? 30% off. You've seen these in the store. Here's how I think about it. Okay. Discounts 30%. Uh, 159 I'm going to make that into a nice round number. Move my decimal once to the left. 10% of 159 would be about, well, it's $15, $16. Okay. 30% means that three values of 15 are going to come off the top. So it's going to be minus about $45, $50 before the taxes. I don't know, maybe 109 bucks. Okay, so guessing in math is totally legit, legitimate. Here we go, 30%, 45, I don't know, maybe a little bit more, 115? Let's see what happens. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to add a little text box over here. And we're going to say multiply price. Um, parentheses one minus the discount as a decimal. Okay, so that's a math sentence there that looks kind of intimidating. But I want to show you what I mean. Multiply the price by one minus the discount as a decimal. So if I have a discount of 30% and I need the decimal for that, well, we reviewed up above 0 0.30. That's going to be a discount as a decimal. Okay. So here we go. 159.95 multiplied times 0 0.70. Why did I choose 0 0.70? You at home, in the empty room, good thought, that is exactly it. One minus the discount as a decimal. We're going to reduce this rate. So 30% off of this 100% price, $159.95, 30% off will mean multiplying times 70% of the value, or 0.7. And when I do that in a calculator, I will not always get the calculator out. Thanks for your patience. We have $159.95 multiplied by 0 0.7. 119 and 97 cents. This 5 at the end rounds up. 119.97 cents. Shoot, I can even put a dollar sign in here. Okay. 30% discount is 0 0.3. You multiply your original price times 1 minus the discount, 0 0.7. Let's do this one more time. I'm leaving a bunch for you guys to do on this. Uh, I think you can do some of these. All right, let's do 21 because I think it's going to illustrate this for you. 99.95 times 1 minus the discount as a decimal. 0 0.60 equals, interesting, 59. And we can put a dollar sign in there. Okay, now just stand back and think about it. The price of the purse was a, about $100, a nice round $100. 10% of that is $10. 10% of 100 is 10. 
forty percent off is like four tens. So it should have been something like a hundred minus forty dollars, which comes to about sixty. Or you can think of it this way: ninety nine ninety five times zero point six. That's going to give me sixty percent of the value of a hundred, or right about. $60. Boy, I hope these go okay for you. It's getting a little harder here. Remember, we're catching up to things. We're going to need this when we compute pay raises and uh, people getting their pay docked. 23. Find each percent change. Round to the nearest tenth of a percent. State if it is an increase or decrease. Okay, got a text box for this. Divide the second number by the first. Let's see what he means. From 91 to 95.7. Okay, find each percent change. So what percentage changes from 91 to 95.7? State if it's an increase or a decrease. Well, I can see that. Uh, 91 to 95.7, this is an increase. Okay. Increase. And it says, divide the second number by the first. So from 91 to 95.7, 95. .7, 95 0.7 divided by 91. That comes to 1.0516. Okay. Now, there's something interesting about this. The percent change. 95.7, and we used to be at 91. What we have is 100% present. So all 91 is there, it's been increased to 95.7. It's over 100%. But the increase is just the stuff to the right of the decimal. So 1.0516 minus 1 equals 0 0.516. Excuse me, I'm missing a zero. Okay. Times 100 equals 5 point, round to the nearest tenth, 5.2%. Think about this a little bit. From 91 to 95.7, we saw an increase. We divided the second number by the first. 95.7 divided by 91. That gave me 1.0516. The 91 got increased to 95.1, 95.7. The extra is this part. This decimal is the increase. Subtract one from it, you're left with just the growth. 0 0.0516 times 100, 5.2%. All right, let's see another one. It's going to be a little different because this one is a decrease. Hmm. Still, I am going to divide 54 by 61. Okay, so the original answer here goes from 61 to 54. Find the percentage change. It's a decrease. It went down some percentage. It didn't go down half. It didn't go down... 90%. It's just a little bit from 61 to 50, 54. Excuse me. So I put 54 divided by 61 and I get 0 0.885 the decimal. Now, since it's a decrease, I'm going to say 1 minus 0 0.885. 54 is 89% of 61. What is the change? 
1 minus 0 0.885 comes to 11.5. Well, I think I skipped a step there. Yes. 1 minus 0 0.885 equals 0 0.115. That's the decimal version times 100, two places to the right. It's an 11.5% decrease. These might be pretty challenging. Take your time with them. There's two more there. Okay. We're on the last page. 27. Take a break if you need. 27. Solve each problem. This is a word problem. Set up the equation. I'm going to try at least one of these. Mm, using my pen. Here we go. I can't wait. I'm excited. Okay. 92 is 97% of what? Okay is 92 is 97% of what? When you see what, you can think of it as an X of what? 92 is 97% of what? Okay, so if you have a percentage, that's like a number. So 97 is equal to 92, and the question says, as a fraction of what? 97 equals 92 over x. OK. Now what do we do? 92 is 97. 97% of what? That's right. Ninety two is ninety seven percent of what? Okay. I'm going to multiply the right side times X. And the left side. These will cancel. That's x times 97 equals 92. Okay, so then I, oopsie, you hit control Z and get rid of that. Now I need to divide by 97 on both sides. And this side is 92. Ooh, that's a bad one. Divided by 97. OK. This time, the 97s cancel. So let's make it back in print, in case that's confusing. x is equal to 92 divided by 97. And that's 94. Well, what it tells you in the calculator is 0 0.948, 94.8%. Excuse me, the number. Whew. 92 is 97% of what number? 94.8. That's the number. Mm. They're all a little bit different in here. These are some of the hardest to think out. Okay. What is 200%? I'm looking at number 30. What is 200% of 45? What is 200% of 45? Okay. 200%. OK, 
Here's how I'm seeing it. Two. So I've taken my percentage and made it into a decimal. Two is equal to x divided by 45. That's how I'm seeing it. What is 200% of 45? As a decimal version, it would say 2. x divided by 45 equals 2. 200% 2 of 45, it's like doubling it. Mm -hmm. And if I multiply both sides of that fraction by 45, I will get x is equal to 90. Mm. If you're still watching the video and you're in school, I hope you've started to look around and see other people that are as serious about this as you are. Check with people towards the end of the class period and you'll have a great start on these. Okay. Looks like I'm gonna move this one over here. Last note, to find each percent change, Round to the nearest tenth of a percent. State if it's an increase or a decrease. All right. Divide the last number by the first. Similar to above. For decrease, for a decrease, subtract the decimal value from one. And I give it the color so it pops at you. Okay. Divide the last divided by 69. Okay. From 69 miles to 10 miles. Okay. Well, I can tell you right now that's a decrease. And look, I think they're all decreases here. So this is a decrease. 10 divided by 69. That in my calculator. Zero point one four five. Zero point one four five. Now, oh. says is decrease subtract the decimal value from 1 1 minus 0 0.145 to 0 0.855 and we have described our decrease 85.5 percent a value of 69 miles reduced to 10 is almost an 86 percent reduction decreased by 85 percent we'll show you the biggest one on here from 35 grams to one gram so imagine maybe a lab rat was losing weight okay divide the last number by the first here we go one divided by 35 equal to 0 0.029 1 minus 0 0.029 equal to 0 0.971. Now, at the decimal, take it to a percentage, you multiply times 100, equivalent to 97.1 percent 35 grams to one gram this is a massive decrease it is 97 percent of the weight lost okay crew i know it's a long video here but i'm uh i'm hoping that as time went on you were just kind of jumping around after you figured out what you could do on this we're going to review fractions excuse me decimals fractions and percentages and hopefully 
this wraps up a week and it gets us ready to work with more applied subjects next week. Thanks for your time and I'll talk to you soon. I miss you.